This episode is brought to you by CBS All Access. If you don't already subscribe to CBS All Access, please use our affiliate link by going to talkthroughmedia.com slash CBS. Using our affiliate link gives us a little credit, which helps us to keep bringing you great content, U.S. residents only. Hello and welcome to episode 45 of the Star Trek Discovery Podcast. I'm Brian. And I'm Ruthie. And this afternoon, we will be covering uh, <laughs> our sh- second short trek. We're a little late in uh, bringing it to you, but uh, thankfully, our technical difficulties with the Book of Face have been resolved. Uh, so we'll record today. Actually, a couple of short treks, but the first one, this episode that you're hearing now, is for the second short trek of season two, titled The Trouble with Edward. But before we get started with that, we did get some feedback from last week, or I should say our last episode, which was for the first short trek this season, titled uh, Q&A. So let's open Hailing Frequencies. And begin with Rick from Cleveland. Ruthie, you want to read that one? Okay. Rick says, a little feedback on Q&A, which I loved. 9.5 out of 10 modern major generals. (laughs) The half point deduction. And my kids noticed this too. Spock's right eyebrow for the first half of the turbo lift sequence just had a mind of its own. They must have redone makeup or shot on a different day for the after number one got zapped part of it because it was fixed later. But it was downright distracting. Other than that, I loved it. Man, I need a Pike's Enterprise show, especially with the dynamic between number one and Spock. The not quite sexual tension and finishing each other's sentences after just having met. I need more. (laughs) So I'm curious now, because I didn't notice this, the right eyebrow having a mind of its own. What does that mean exactly? Was it like forming its own sentences? (laughs) 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 What was it doing exactly? I have no idea. I don't know what he's talking about either. Yeah. I'll have to go back and look, but, uh, I am curious now. We also got something from James, the augmented sailor. He says, just had a listen, guys, Brian, you're right about naval officer rank structure, ensign, lieutenant, junior grade, lieutenant, etc. As far as advancement goes, officers advance as openings become available and senior officers select who advances. So a lot of it depends on service record. And of course, networking because of this advancement for an officer can vary widely. An officer like Spock is what we would call not only squared away, but poop hot <laughs> as we would say in the Navy. And he didn't say poop. So as long as billets allotted positions for the rank are available, he would advance with quickness. Junior officers or JOs like ensigns, to lieutenants tend to advance quickly to start with because of course there would be many more billets available for them. It's not a stretch to say Spock could have made lieutenant within a year or two. Another little tidbit, a line officer in the Navy can and usually does cross departments as a division officer too. So you can even rationalize Spock wearing gold in where no man has gone before as he was in charge of a division in the command department. Winky smiley face. An example of this is Worf going from operations on Enterprise to command on DS9. And that's our naval lesson of the day. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Brian, I just wanted to say that I missed you both since LT from NC only missed Ruthie. (laughs) (laughs) 
And I explained on the message thread uh, that LT listens to uh, me on the Walking Dead talk through, so he doesn't miss me as much, whereas he only gets Ruthie on this, well, this and now the Star Trek Picard cast, so... Um, yeah, I just have one thing to say about that. <coughs> Sucking up. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> that won't it, get you a promotion. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with sucking up, just so you know. Yes. But we call it like it is here. <laughs> yeah, and it's, uh, just- you know, it's funny if it's talking about sucking up with since the last time we recorded, both of us are in new jobs. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yay us. I was just uh, about to start my new job, and you were interviewing for a job, and shortly after recording, we you got it. So, anyway. Yeah. Good for, good for so- her, and of course, I'll say... In any case, we have had upheaval and change in our life, but it has been for the better. At least I can definitely for 100% say in my case, definitely for the better. I cannot express my delight at not being at my former job anymore. (laughs) My former dead-end job, I should say. Yeah. So if anyone from my former job is listening, now you know why I left, because it was dead-end. And you guys didn't appreciate me. (laughs) <laughs> I don't want to care. I don't want to go on anymore about that because I'm just, I could go on forever and I don't want to get started. That chapter of my life is over and that's all we need to know. <laughs> and of course, what is this bizarre segue that's happening right now? <laughs> Can we maybe stay on point? Shut up, Blaine. Anyway, we've also had other things going on with the podcast and so forth and things happening and Facebook is giving us fits. So. Yes. Although finally Life. Facebook and we are back on speaking terms. <laughs> yeah, so. that's right. Facebook <laughs> and I are no longer on a break. <laughs> <laughs> he he finishes to say, anyways, I'm getting long winded. Oh <laughs> gee. On our <laughs> podcast is that well, some people like it, some people don't. But I'm getting long winded, so I'll jump off here and wait to hear you guys on the next cast. Well, Thank, Thank you so James. much, James. I really appreciate all of your naval insights. I really do. So I, do I. Because I'm I I have no experience with that whatsoever. So I'm always curious about why things are a certain way. And here you are, always in a pinch to explain it to me. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate your knowledge. All right, let's get into this short track titled "The Trouble with Edward," <laughs> written by Graham Wagner. And he is known for um, being a writer on a a few different uh, comedy things, Um, Silicon Valley, most recently, Baskets, and Portlandia. And he's also written for Mulaney. Probably the most famous one of this bunch is The Office and The Life and Times of Tim, which I've not heard of at all. I think the rest of them I've heard of. Of course, Silicon Valley, I think, is is it ending this season? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I've heard of Silicon Valley, Portlandia, and The Office. The rest of them, the other three. So I've heard of half of that stuff. Mm. I, have, I have no idea what that other stuff is. Yeah, Baskets is is the one with Louis Anderson, I know. I don't think Mulaney was on very long. Still nothing. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. It's where Louis Anderson is playing an old grandmother or something. Anyway. But I've not I've not seen it. Yes, I'm not ringing any bells. Yeah, directed <laughs> by Daniel Gray Longino, and he's got credits with something called Pen Fifteen. And if you capitalize that, um, that's how it's written. But you know, I think one five is replaced replaces I S. So you do the math. Uh- Interesting. Who, who is America? AP Bio and Alone Together. And Pen 15, I've only vaguely heard of, but the rest of them I have not. 
So I've heard of AP Bio. Okay. But nothing else. The description from CBS.com is as follows. Newly minted Captain Lynn Lucero, Rosa Salazar, is excited to take command of the USS Cabot until she meets Edward Larkin, H. John Benjamin, an ornery scientist, that's a good word for him, who, <laughs> belie- who believes he has found a revolutionary new use for tribbles. It is uh, TVPG, and it aired October 10th, 2019. Okay, so. Probably PG, because that time he ran around in his underwear, and the fact that he died. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Died from his own stupidity or hubris. Anyway. And he's not dumb. <laughs> <laughs> he is not dumb, but he is an idiot. All right. I always wonder about why they, why something gets a certain rating, you know? It just, it makes me curious sometimes. I'm like, hmm, why did it have that rating? Or why does it get TVMA? Or why does it get whatever, yeah. 14 or something? You know, I'm just curious about the things that make them grant these ratings that sometimes seem arbitrary. I think if they show like killing or if it has like swear words or something like that, then it gets a higher rating, but nudity definitely gets a higher rating. Yes. Like I noticed uh, recently the Mandalorian episode was rated PG and it had killing all over the place, but it didn't actually show any of it like on screen. It can't be too high because of baby Yoda. <laughs> so cute. Oh my gosh. <gasps> yes. I die all the time. Just cuteness overload. I'm like, I can't handle the cute. It's too cute. Yeah. I thought about covering that for our Patreon. I don't know. Is that a possibility? We're not committing to it. <laughs> but we commit to nothing. Yes. All right. So, Ruthie, what would you give The Trouble with Edward? I'd definitely give this episode a 10 because it was a 10 in my book. It was so good. I mean, it was just, it was awesome. It combined my favorite things, Star Trek, humor, you know, a Mm. few of my favorite things anyway. I love things that are funny and genuinely funny, not like slap. I don't know. Well, sometimes I like slapstick, slapstick. I, (coughs) excuse me, slapstick. But, I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to describe humor. It's very subjective, but this just really did it for me, you hmm. know? Well, like last episode, there is the regular me and then there's the nitpicking me. And you're going to hear from both sides of me uh today. So, the regular me would also give this a 10, and I'd say 10 tickling cereals. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But the nitpicking me would give it more like a four. Why did this get made? Kind of thing. So, And the regular me is going to slap nitpicking you upside your head. Yes. But thankfully... <laughs> But thankfully, nitpicking Brian is the uh, recessive me. (laughs) So I'm going to give it an overall nine crazy plots. So, all right. So listener ratings. Beat the nitpicking you into submission. (laughs) This is one of those episodes, though. I have to acknowledge that part of me, both for me and for the haters. Because Mm. there's stuff to hate in this episode, I hate to say, but most of me seems to tolerate it. All right, so we have listener ratings. James the Augmented Sailor says, The trouble with Archer, er, Edward, is nine. You called me dumb. (laughs) Oh, I was thinking Archer, like Enterprise, but that's because uh, H. John Benjamin plays Archer. (laughs) So it's a different Archer. Not the Star Trek Archer. Rick from Cleveland says, I rate this short Trek 9.5 out of 10 post-credit scenes. 
That's right, friends. If you stopped watching partway through the credits, you missed a gem at the end. Yes, you did. Agreed. It's definitely a gem. LT from NC says, I'm giving it a qualified 7.8 out of 10 made of meats. And if this isn't as funny as the original feedback, blame the social media giant that ate them. <laughs> yes, well, thankfully we recovered all the stuff that was originally uh, given to us. Yeah, we did. Mm hmm. All right, so let's go through our yeses. Yes! <clears throat> James the Augmented Sailor says, I've never laughed so much at Star Trek. H. John Benjamin is great. Going outside of anything we've ever seen on Star Trek, but still keeping it Star Trek. This is only going to attract new fans. All right. I believe that's all we got particularly classified as yes. I think largely because on the short tracks, they're smaller. So yeah. stuff doesn't get like separated as much. Right. It's harder to, I mean, it's like basically one segment of a normal show, like in between commercials or whatever. Right. All right. Um, what did you have for yeses? I just the, loved the commercial at the end. <laughs> it was hilarious. Yeah. It that looked was. like a I mean it looked wasn't there a commercial a trouble or a triple something or other commercial? Originally? I, yes, I swear. I don't know, man. Mm. It looked like I mean it, it they definitely did an excellent job of making it look like something that would have been in existence, but it's you can tell it was not a yeah. previous commercial because the uniforms are updated. Yeah. With the new uniforms mm -hmm. that they have. Awesome. Mm -hmm. it was probably the only thing that I had that was specifically yes, other than the fact that I really liked this episode. <laughs> I think this is my favorite short trek to date. Cool. I had a couple of things where I have to start the beauty shot of the Enterprise and the Cabot. Love seeing that. And of course, Pike. And if I would criticize it, it was that there wasn't enough Pike, but <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. And uh, the discussion, I, I kept on expecting her to say, zip it, zip it. <laughs> when she would say this conversation is over, it reminded me of that. Like it was something almost from Seinfeld or a show like that. I thought that the comedic parts of it were really good, but yeah, <laughs> it's just, it was pretty funny. And you know, something else like them taking that big shop vac out there to try to suck yeah, up the triples. That was hilarious. That was also hilarious. Oh my gosh. So yeah. many elements of this episode were hilarious. I would also say the commercial at the end was hysterical. The overall episode was hysterical too. I mean, it's probably the, definitely the funniest of the bunch and you know that says a lot compared to the uh escape artist last season with um harry mud uh -huh. but like for overall laugh a minute kind of stuff this was uh was definitely you know in there uh there was a trill on the cabot which uh -huh. i was surprised about i don't know if this is the first like african-american uh, style. <laughs> I don't know what's obviously not African American tr trill. So, um, but yeah, I don't think that she's American. No, <laughs> this is the problem with this politically correct label. Yes, not all people who came out of Africa are African American. So, right. to me and a lot of people, it's less awkward to just say black. Well, yes, and, and you wouldn't <laughs> use that description for Tuvok either. You wouldn't. Yeah. But, I mean, you could say a black-skinned trill because that is a descriptive term, and it's not a negative descriptive term. Yeah. It's, it's not negative in my opinion. I don't find anything wrong with saying something is the color that it is. Racially diverse trills. There you go. Yeah. Now, of course, we, we have seen racially diverse trills in the past because we 
our very first trail looked nothing. Actually, the first two trails that we see look nothing like the uh, trails that go past that because I think it was in the host from TNG, the one where Crusher fell in love with a, a, a trail. Uh-huh. That trail and the trail that replaced him looked nothing like Jadzia or uh, Esri Dax, for example. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's okay. It's just part of finding your way. <laughs> also, I guess I would say just the overall acting in, in this one was really good. I didn't know that Rosa Salazar had a comedic side. Well, I, I don't really know her. Like, I know she was in, was it Akira? I think. I she played, don't know. She played that character that had the really big eyes. So we didn't actually see her on screen and I've not seen that. What are you talking about? She was, she, she played like the title character in, I think it's Akira battle angel. Oh, Alita. Alita. That's sorry. Alita. Is that what it is? Yes, it is. Yes. You're right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> anyway, so yes, Alita Battle Angel, but anyway. Um, uh, yeah, now, now that you say that though, yeah, it does look like her. I realize. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And she is in a new Amazon series with actually. Oh. Um, that one, I can't remember the name of it, but it's recent, it, and it's in Rotoscope. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. I'll have to look that up. Um, but she's in that with uh, Bob Odenkirk from uh, Better Call Saul and Better uh, Breaking Bad. Interesting. Um, yeah. The, it looks interesting, that, that series. But there it is. It's called Undone on Amazon. She's uh, she's good in the role, and H. Uh, John Benjamin is great in the role. Yeah. So you know, overall, I I think I think it was quite hysterical, and I think it did a really good job of showing, and in a lot of ways, what the animated like the lower decks might be. Mm. You know, because could be. Yeah. So I'm uh, and uh, from. The things that I've heard about it since like San Diego Comic-Con, I'm a lot more up for that show than I originally was. I wasn't really sure what we were going to see, but I think it looks like it's going to be really good. All right. So let's go on to the nose. No! <laughs> so do you have any nose? Nope. Listener knows we have one no, and that's from James... The Augmented Sailor, and he says, Purists will hate it. Supposedly, Roddenberry didn't have a sense of humor, and comedy has no place in Trek. Okay, this isn't a no, because they're going to hate it no matter what. <laughs> True enough. And to that end, we're going to now hear from me. That's nitpicking Brian. Because nitpicking Brian has a few things to say. Okay, so. Captain Lucero, she wasn't a very good captain. Look how she treats Larkin versus Picard's treatment of Barkley. And I'm going to wrestle the microphone from nitpicking me to say, Barkley, seriously? <laughs> Barkley has quirks, but he didn't do anything like what Larkin did in this episode. So shut up, nitpicking Brian. <laughs> I would have to agree with normal Brian on that one. <laughs> I don't quite, I mean, they're similar in spirit, but I'm not quite sure that Barkley ever disobeyed a direct order. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, or sent stuff to Starfleet Command and said that, like, Picard or for that matter, LaForge is dumb. <laughs> yeah. 
And I don't really think you could say that she's not a very good captain. I think you could say that she's not a very experienced captain. True. True. But again, I'm not quite sure she was expecting to have this. She's right. How did this guy ever get through Starfleet? Yeah. So I don't think it's fair to say that this is entirely... I, I don't know. I'm like, she probably never expected to have to deal with something like this. Um, Larkin, he's not exactly Starfleet material. I mean, come on. How did he get in on, on this ship or any ship? Okay. I can't disagree with that one nitpicking me. <laughs> he should definitely not have been on this ship, but I don't think that's her fault. No, but... But seriously, she's condescending, she's playing favorites, and what's with her assigning, assigning him to climate control? That has nothing to do with protein or even biology. Okay. She, I don't think she's condescending either. I'm not quite sure how you deal with a person who, when you give them a direct order and say we're done talking about it, they continue to behave in the manner that he did. I don't think that she's condescending, though. At all, personally. That said, I do agree with that nitpicking side of me on part of this, because I think assigning him to climate control is just going to piss him off. And even someone who doesn't have the reputation or whatever, and maybe you can assume that she didn't really know much about him when she did that, but like something so drastically different from his specialty, I think was kind of condescending. It definitely was inexperienced. And I think that was kind of not very forward thinking of her to do that. I mean, yes, he definitely did need to be uh, kind of uh, reeled in, but uh, I don't yeah. think... But come on, how much, I mean, I, uh, we have no idea, I mean, I feel like this is way too in-depth for this episode that was just really meant to be silly. We have mm. no idea what kind of personnel issues she was dealing with or anything else outside of the scope of the 15 minutes that we see on the little tiny splice of this thing. We have no idea what was more important. We have no idea. Mm. Maybe climate was more important. Maybe there was a need there that, as she said, we're all scientists. We can learn that they can fill. How is she supposed to know that this is going to piss him off and that he's going to react thusly? Mm. Honestly, I mean, give the girl a break. She had no idea that telling him to abandon his triple, product, triple project was going to result in basically what amounted to um, an invasive, uncontrollable species that takes over and is basically like the kind of, I mean, if you're in a garden and you have this kind of plant crop up, you kill it, kill it, kill it. <laughs> and he, I mean, he, I just, I don't know. I I think that's 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 putting way too much uh, way over analyzing an episode that is not meant to be over analyzed that much. Like I well, said, we have no idea what was going on in the background of this, and I don't feel like that was being condescending at all. She mm. was using her people and placing them where she thought that they needed to be, and she did not want this uh, line of um, you know exploration to continue. So she put an end to it and said, "Redirect here." Yeah, it wasn't his specialty, but. If there is no other biology area that he can, you know, that his specialty can go in, what is he supposed to do? Sit mm -hmm. on his butt? No, she needs to allocate her resources as she sees fit. That's what a captain does. So she did that. So he got butt hurt over it and created an invasive species that took over the ship and blew it up. I don't think that's her fault. <laughs> and started a diplomatic issue with the Klingons. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say... The point that you brought up about her inexperience, I think, is uh, definitely worth noting here. And that's probably more to blame than anything. Like, what she probably should have done was ended the discussion about the tribbles and then 
uh, had an aside with him after the meeting to just say why it wasn't appropriate and see if it could be redirected or get him more excited about like a different specialty. But but we don't know that that didn't happen just because we didn't see it in this 15 minute episode that was really just supposed to be lighthearted and funny does not mean it did not happen. I'm just saying this is way over analyzing. It was supposed to be funny. We can't say that all of those things didn't happen. We can say that he probably wouldn't have reacted any better had she done that. Well, I would say. If I were not a consummate professional and an android, I would find this entire procedure insulting. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yes. That's a little sneak peek of new sound effects that you will hear on the Picard. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, I'm saying, I'm just saying, I'm going to defend this episode with my dying breath because I thought it was hilarious and I would like more of it. And I do not want you to besmirch this any further with your negative nitpicking, nitpicky. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So to to explain, <laughs> I want to explain myself just for a, a, a bit. So okay, what careful. what I want, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what <laughs> I wanted, what I want to try to do is see, like I keep hearing a lot of the negative Nellies out there besmirching uh, Discovery a lot of times unfairly for things that I think are either inaccurate or are not in the spirit of things. And what I want to do sometimes is highlight those things, give them a, like a podium to speak. And then we can acknowledge, because I, what I don't want to do is to say, we're looking at this with rose colored glasses or that we're looking at it and we think everything is amazing and that is not what we do on this podcast. So I think exposing everything for what it is, I think is a good thing. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do for this one, because there are some things that I think some people would not like at all. And I think some of it, or at least a little bit of it, has merit, but I think you have to take the spirit of it. And like, I think that it's in canon, but maybe just the tone is is off. And well, let's face it. I mean, not every officer in Starfleet is going to be a gem. You know, they're not all going to be officers on discovery or the enterprise, you know, there are going to be some not so great people and it. So there will be personnel issues, right? Right. So you will get people like Larkin who are not doing so well. And um, I think it's okay to show those things. Uh, But yeah, this guy was just, out there. He was insane. And the things that he ended up doing in this episode were insane. And so he proved himself by doing like literally disobeying a direct order um, and putting the whole ship in jeopardy and ended up causing his life, you know, losing his life over it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't think that those things should be discounted. I think he was a bad officer. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, but I feel like this was kind of maybe a... Uh, and he really wanted to eat those tribbles. I know, he really did. Yeah. And she, well, you know, she he was not able to answer whether or not they were intelligent. And so that kind of, to me, or to her, in my opinion, was a red flag because she's mm-hmm. like, oh. I don't know if we can, you know, move forward with this. If we can't tell that they're intelligent, we're basically violating the prime directive, more or less, kind of, you know, it's not going to start eating intelligent creatures just because anyway. Yeah. Yeah. 
But I feel like this was, I mean, all I could think of is to say is that it's an exaggeration of, uh, I don't, I know. I can't think of the word I'm thinking of, but it's, it's like an exaggerated example of a bad officer kind of, mm-hmm. thing, you know, I'm like, not every officer is going to do, not every bad officer is going to do this. Right. Not every officer is going to be an outstanding, you know, spectacular representation of Starfleet, but mm-hmm. yeah, so. I think it was kind of an exaggeration sort of to prove a point sort of thing. I don't know. Yeah. And I think what James said was right. Purists are going to hate it. But you know what? Haters are going to hate no matter what. So there's not really anything we can do to change their minds. And I don't really, I mean, while I feel like, yes, you're correct, we are not going to be overly praiseworthy. We're going to critique when we feel it's necessary. I also don't want to give too much time or weight to the people who hate just because they want to, because it's not mm. its not the original series or it's not TNG or what have you, you know, mm. any given enter your particular phrase here thing that it's not. Uh, it just... I'm sorry, it's not what you wanted. I can't change that. Right. So don't spend so much time on things you hate. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and to that end, let's move on to Hold Your Horses. Hello, this is Captain Tilly. What the he- heck? Hell. What the hell? Hold your horses. <laughs> Always gold. Oh, Tilly. Yeah, we could have used a short trek with Tilly this this time around, but I think... We're basically done with Discovery cast on the short treks for this season. Like after, you know, we've, we'll also be uh, talking about Ask Not next, but like the, the next two that are in December are animated. And then the last one is Picard oriented. So, mm, so. yeah. All right. So uh, James, the augmented sailor, has a couple. He says, skivvies are still a thing in the 23rd. Oh, man, Starfleet tailors are sadistic. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, of course, this is referencing when he was running down the hall in his underwear. (laughs) Yeah. I noticed that he he had the same red kind of underwear that uh, Stamets and and, uh, Cobra had in discovery when we see them like brushing their teeth red uh, they season. were white no were no 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 whiteies. there's the one scene i think was in choose your pain it was right after stamets had first injected himself with the tardigrade dna and we see him in the mirror and then we see kind of like a mirror image linger on him they're wearing like this like red or burgundy color or crimson, I don't know. Well, you're the crimson person, so you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like pajamas or whatever, we see them brushing their teeth with with that same color thing on. So, so you're talking about the top, not the underwear. Yeah, the the top. Okay. Yeah, naval reference. He says, "Tidy whities." <laughs> okay. Yeah. Naval reference, my own with skivvies. This is what we call boot camp issue, whitey tidy underwear. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Tidy whiteys. That's awesome. Boot camp issued, huh? That's that's nice. (laughs) Oh, goodness. Our own hold your horses. I just had phasers on stun on here. Like, what would the stun do? (laughs) I guess she didn't want to vaporize them. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, she's still dealing with are these sentient creatures? So, Uh, yeah, true. (laughs) Trying to humanely dispose of them. Until she can figure out, you know, I mean, she's basically being over. I don't think at this point in time in the episode, the phasers on stun episode or part of the episode that she realizes that he has um, inserted his own DNA into the, yeah, into the tribbles, which is highly unethical. Yes. (laughs) Not only did she tell him 
direct order, drop it. He then proceeds to not drop it with this highly unethical experiment, basically. And and his response, not like so-and-so's that uh, DNA would be any better. <laughs> what? I don't think you understand what we're upset about. The fact that you introduced human DNA to the dribbles in the first place. Not that it was your DNA, dumbass. Yeah, now with Edward DNA... By the way, another th- thing that I should have said uh, in the yeses was, were the disclaimers on the commercial. <gasps> they were. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a choking hazard. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this, uh, and this comes- cereal has more DNA than any other. <laughs> more human DNA than any other cereal. Uh, those are the building blocks of life. Oh, my gosh. And something about like. Um, not responsible for them growing in your um, digestive tract or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then th- there was the add-on that came with something to shave them down. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so crazy. Oh, good times. Yeah. Let's move on to our uh, feedback section and open hailing frequencies. Okay, so our first one is a voicemail from Fred from the Netherlands. Hello, Brian and Ruthie. This is Fred from the Netherlands with some feedback for short track number six or season two, episode two, The Trouble with Edward. A very nice and funny episode, much better episode than the first one. Love to see so many troubles back. And as a geneticist, it's fun to know that the fast-breeding tribbles are actually partly human. Now I know why the Klingons dislike them. I also liked how this Edward is thinking in a complete different way than the other scientists, having some, I think, autistic features. One of my sons has autism, so I did recognize some reactions. Very funny is, of course, that there was a food problem on this planet and... Pike says to this female commander that she will resolve it. And actually, Edward comes with a with a solution. So, fun. I'm a protein scientist, and these are proteins. And if you have any ethical problems, I just can genetically modify them. Then they will be mentally retarded, and so then that is not a problem anymore. Well, that's a way to solve your ethical problems. But uh, okay, not good, of course. But still. I think they found a nice way here to show his way of thinking. Especially the end of conversation discussion is so recognizable. Actually, for me, that's more recognizable towards my other son. So the one that's not autistic. He is so stubborn. He always wants to have the last word. So it was uh, it was nice. One last thing I want to say is... This conversation's over. You're dismissed. Right. This is the end of the conversation. Captain, if I could... You can't. Right, but I had this... The conversation's over. That's the end. Well, technically, the conversation is not over because I can keep talking and then the conversation is is continuing. I I don't know how you made it this far in your career behaving like this. You think I'm dumb? This is why I ended the conversation. I'm having you transferred. End of conversation. It would be rude and irresponsible to end the conversation. The conversation's over. Remember, earlier I said, Fred, shut up. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. That was hysterical. Oh, Fred, that was amazing. funny. Yep. Never disappoints. That's true. Some people do require the last word, but... Until you're the captain, I don't think that you can always get the last word. <laughs> well, first of all, I have to say thank you so much, Fred, for an amazing piece of feedback. Uh, and thank you so much for everything you do for us. Yeah, so that last part of it, and I have to admit, that's the first time that I got to listen to this. <laughs> So I, I was going into it kind of blind. I, I listened to your other one, but I didn't listen to this one for some reason. But that was amazing. 
I'm glad we didn't talk too much about the conversation is over at where I didn't pull a clip. So yeah. you pulled the clip for me, sort of. I like your thing about now I know why the Klingons dislike them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had put two and two together on that, but, uh, but yeah, yeah you know. if like some have argued that there are two separate tribal species, like there's the ones that we saw in the trouble with tribbles and to that end, maybe they didn't reproduce as fast as Larkin wanted them, but it's also suggested that there could be a rapidly producing. Cause I mean, even on, in the original episode uh, from the original series, they didn't reproduce this fast, <laughs> you know, cause I mean, they, they're basically, we see them like fill up uh, the mess hall in seem like, like a minute or two. Well, just to be on the flip side, no one had ever really experienced this before this. So true. Maybe they just didn't know how to deal with it yet. And again, they're not really sure how, what kind of force, I guess, to use. You know, they're still, like I said, still uncertain about whether or not this is an, a sentient species that we need to take care to deal with that have been maybe grossly mistreated by Edward. So it seems like if this had never been a thing before and suddenly you have to deal with it, that it's not out of the realm of possibility that it could get out of hand just that quickly. Mm -hmm. I think if you had never had any kind of like, if you had never seen a bamboo shoot grow before and didn't know how fast bamboo would grow and you thought, oh, I'll just leave this here and it'll be fine. And then suddenly it's taking over your house. <laughs> you know, I mean, how fast does bamboo grow? It grows like, I don't know, a couple uh, I don't know. I, I hesitate to venture a guess, but it grows really, really fast. Mm. Like faster than a normal plant. Mm. The autistic features he mentioned, I kind of thought of that myself. So particularly, he seemed to be pretty socially inept and unable to pick up on social cues, I think. But just having uh, tone deaf, you know, being tone deaf on on certain things like mm -hmm. like the ethics, um, you know, suggesting that he uh, make them brain damaged. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we won't have to worry about whether or not they're sentient or whatever. Yeah. So obviously, it would be would not occur to him that perhaps uh, introducing his own DNA into this species might be an issue. Yeah. I would like to see how he did in uh, his Starfleet. Kobayashi Maru. <laughs> well, <laughs> a any kind of ethical training, because I imagine he didn't do well on the ethics courses. And if he did, it was a fluke. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, so bamboo, certain species of bamboo can grow 36 inches within a 24-hour period. Oh, wow. That's a rate of almost an inch and a half an hour. Hmm. Or one one point a little over an inch and a half. One point six inches an hour, forty four millimeters. So thirty six inches in a twenty four hour period. That is a foot and a half, basically. No wait, that's three feet. Sorry, my math is not math today. Three feet in an hour, or three feet in a day. So that's still yeah. quite quite quick. So yeah, I mean it's not like being born pregnant, but still, it's comparable. I think. If you had no idea that bamboo would grow so fast, you might not, you wouldn't necessarily take action at the time. Yeah. And stubbornness, uh, that particularly was uh, a thing. He, he definitely was stubborn, but, but anyway, um, really great feedback, Fred. Thank you so much yes. for it. All right. Our next is uh, Rick from Cleveland. All right, Rick says, I loved this short trek. It was just fun. It's rare for my kids to hang around when I put Star Trek on TV, but they hung around. They laughed and loved it. Not only did they love it, but my 12-year-old, after seeing the post credit scenes, says, do you have any other funny ones? <laughs> <laughs> 
I showed her Q&A, which I thought was tons of fun, but kind of requires you to get those two characters. So she says, how about one with Tribbles? <laughs> <laughs> she sat through every minute of The Trouble with Tribbles, 1967 effects and all, and enjoyed it. At the end, she gave me feedback on it. Dad, I rate this one 10 points lower than the new one. Why, I ask. There was no scene after the credits. <laughs> I'm still laughing over that. As much as I enjoyed Discovery, the first season was not something I could share with my kids. The second season, sure, much more family friendly. But this short trek, I got to see my youngest watch this with the same joy I did back in 1970-something. Now, setting that aside, I dock it half a point because realistically, Edward never would have made it through the Academy. The captain is right. He was an idiot. Side note, I actually had not watched a TOS episode on CBS All Access before. I catch them on H&I from time to time. I gotta say, the remastered effects in HD do not work for me. They are like cheap CGI. I'd take the old models shot any day. It was at least consistent with the rest of the show. Interesting. Mm. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah, I agree also that Edward should never have made it onto a Starfleet ship, but... That was sort of the whole impetus of that particular show. So I had to go with it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I said about him being a Starfleet officer, but I mean, technically, I don't know if that was, was that established that he was a lieutenant? I don't know if it was. So it's possible that he never went through the academy. I don't know. He could have been like a, chief o'brien but for protein <laughs> so i feel like in order to be a scientist in the manner that he was i mean based on the way that officers are created now either through directly through a naval academy or uh some other type of rotc um you have to have some kind of college education to be right. an officer. So you're not really an officer or you're not really college educated and not an officer. And in order to be the kind of scientist that he was, I'm sure that he's college educated at the very least, whether or not he went through the academy or not, he's definitely educated in some manner of a uh, secondary or post education, post secondary education, whatever, right. some type of manner. However, they educate their people in the future. I don't know if it's still, you know, college education, blah, 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 master's program, doctoral, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. But based on that, there's no way he's not an officer. But I, I would agree with that. As we've said before, there's no way this guy is an officer. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I mean, and plus Larkin is not a young guy. Yeah, I don't know how, what the age of H. John Benjamin is, but. He's not fresh faced. He's yeah, he's definitely not like we said in the Picard episode. We are not spring chickens. Yeah, he yeah. I I mean, and maybe I maybe the previous captain just knew how to deal with him and had become accustomed to his quirks. But that captain was retiring, and so true, true. You know, I now he has to deal with a new person that he does not have the tolerance or the patience to do. And therefore, this bad thing happened. And it was kind of hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And I looked him up. I, I was thinking he was around my age and I was correct. He's he's uh, like he would have been in the same school year as me. He's um, 53. So I'll be turning that age soon. So, not born in the same year, but uh, he was May of 66. Anyway. Very good. So, obviously, he's a guy that, unless he joined Starfleet later in life, I mean, he's been around. So, he's. <laughs> it's funny that he uh, would have been you know, gotten as far as he, he had, assuming, you know, he went to the academy at a young age um he's been in starfleet for you know 25 30 years so or maybe he was commissioned well after the fact maybe but he didn't actually go through the academy i don't know i mean who knows I yeah just, i, I mean, would just say that he probably had a his previous captain 
knew how to deal with him. Probably, which you would think if it, if there was a, an issue with him that he would have um, left notes for her or something. Maybe, but maybe he's the reason that the previous captain is retiring. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm tired of dealing with this guy. And uh, maybe said, you know, I'm not going to say anything about this guy because uh, that'll just scare people away. Mm-hmm. So who knows? But anyway, I remember, it may have been you, Rick. I know that we have some of that long form feedback where people were talking about how Discovery wasn't a show that they could share with their kids. So I, especially that first season, I would agree with that. You know, like the Klingon breastuses and the F bomb. That's more of a PG 13 kind of thing, I guess. But it's definitely TVMA. Well, I guess that's true. <laughs> but not, I, I, yeah, you're right. You're right. Not TVPG. You're right. That's it, mate. You're right. But it's worth saying that, um, yeah, because I mean, even The Walking Dead doesn't use the F bomb um, on, even well, though they could, they, they don't. Uh, they don't. Oh, I was going to say they are also bound by FCC regulations. I'm not sure streaming is. Well, it's broadcast that is. Cable isn't, but they still kind of follow that to an extent. Like I, I think it's like self-regulated. That's why you occasionally see, like on um, Better Call Saul, for example, they'll occasionally in on Preacher they'll occasionally use an f bomb, but. Um, and those are both on AMC, but Walking Dead doesn't do it all because, the time on Mr. Robot. Yeah. They are not shy. Yeah. <laughs> That's a show that I got to get caught up on. <gasps> yeah. I'm clutching my pearls right now. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's been a little bit slower this season, but still, the last couple of episodes that I've watched have been pretty outstanding. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, uh, about the special effects, I've had a similar reaction to it. I mean, I've definitely noticed them when they've done it, and they haven't changed all the shots, I I noticed as well. But I wouldn't say it's off-putting, but it is something that I will notice when I watch. It is kind of a different thing, but then again... Some of the things that they did that were a little less obvious special effects, like I think one of the androids, they replaced the circuitry of the android with something a little more up to date versus like transistors and things like that. I I think that was a good thing to do, but you know when they drastically change the the look of something, I, I don't think that's a good thing to do. Well, when it doesn't mesh with the rest of it, as he says here, it's at least consistent with the rest of the show, then it that can be jarring and take you out of it. Yeah. Like you can kind of sink yourself into the 60s effect to where it doesn't really stand out that much anymore after you've been watching it for a while, I guess. You know, it's like Shakespeare. Once you've been listening to it enough, you kind of get used to the rhythm of the language and you can understand it without really having to think about it really hard. I feel like this is kind of the same thing when you're talking about like old so old sci-fi effects, like mm-hmm. practical effects and such things like that. So I get what you're saying. I'd rather it be consistent because I can lose myself in it rather than being jarred out of it with this glaring difference. Yeah, I agree. But then again, you know, like some of the stuff that I've seen updated for Next Generation and for that matter, the special effects that were kind of uh, remastered for the Deep Space Nine documentary, which, by the way, have you seen that yet? Not yet. (laughs) All right. So next is from James, the Augmented Sailor. I'll take this one. He says, this episode boldly went where no Trek has gone before and paved the way for Lower Decks with flying colors. Casting each John Benjamin was perfect. His portrayal was reminiscent of Dwight Schultz as Barkley with his social awkwardness. But I would say Barkley never had the ethics issues. (laughs) (laughs) Where I compared 
Reno to Miles, I compare Edward to Barkley. These characters don't have the filters their predecessors did, and it's so refreshing. I just feel sorry for Captain Lucero. Her career is over. And I have to say, I don't think her career is over. She is totally going to blame everything on Edward and probably be okay. Yeah, I wonder if it might be a while before she gets a command chance again. No doubt about that, but I don't think her career is over. Yeah, and I'm not sure like what rank she was on the Enterprise before she, she moved over. So, because, you know, it, it's possible that she jumped a couple of command, because considering it's a, it's a lowly ship, it's not like a, a big ship, it's a lowly science not vessel. flagship. Right. You know, she could have gone, say, from a lieutenant and skip lieutenant commander and commander and go right to captain for that matter. Maybe. They also say that the uh, captain is sort of like a, it, it's like how, like when Saru is commanding the vessel, he's a captain, even though he's oh, any a commander. Time you're, anytime you're the head of the ship, you're the captain, whether or not your rank is captain. Is that what you're trying to say? Right. So, you know, she may have not been a captain in rank, even though she was referred to as a captain. So I, I don't know. I didn't notice. I, I want to say that she had the rings on the on her sleeves that would suggest that she was a captain. But still, even that, if that was the case, she may have not been a commander before. So I think I think there is precedence there. And James, I'm looking to you to respond to that. That's right. James, you'll let us know. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'll uh, take the next one as well. And was this one a recovered piece of feedback or was this uh, reposted? Uh, those uh, Demarcus Terry and Arend, or Arend, I don't know how you say that name, are all three from the first link that we posted, the first feedback mm -hmm. thing that we posted. I went back, got them all. Got them yeah, all. good. Yeah, because those uh, pieces of feedback, like, when we had our little snafu with Facebook, though that post, that whole uh, episode thread disappeared from Facebook. Right. And it happened when we were about to record this yeah. episode. So that's, yes. the, that's another reason why we haven't recorded it for so long, because we were kind of sort of waiting, hoping. Yeah. Plus life and et cetera. <laughs> yes. Uh, DeMarcus from Facebook says, that was hilarious. I loved it. I actually felt like the humor in that short trek landed better than that on a lot of the Orville shows. Ooh, interesting. Mm. I think the Orville is definitely a specific type of humor that if you don't find funny, then mm. it's just not funny. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I think on the Orville, some of the jokes land better than others. Like I think, you know, from season one, that practical joke where, what's his name? The android. Cuts off the other guy's leg. Yeah, I knew that's what you were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, can't think of his name right now. I can't either. Yeah. But um, Scott Grimes plays the, the character that his leg gets. Appendages are disattached. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That was funny. The answer is Isaac. Isaac. That's right. Yes. And uh, Scott Grimes' character is Lieutenant Gordon Malloy. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't think of it. Anyway, uh, Terry from Facebook says, "I really loved that we now have an explanation for the Tribbles in Kirk's time being so prolific. Other than that, their natural predators were gone." And the baby shooting out was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, crying, rolling over, crying, laughing face. So, yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah, the babies just popping out were hilarious. And I love when she's like, um, actually, we've discovered that they're born pregnant. <laughs> yep. What? Yeah, that was hilarious. Um, 
Aaron from Facebook says, yeah, I must work with that guy and hate him. <laughs> <laughs> I can empathize with that. Yeah. Okay, Clint from Facebook says, I did like this episode because it is so different from what we know as Trek. If the new CBS Viacom wanted to expand the franchise into sitcoms, I could see this as the concept piece on how it would work. Yeah. I can agree with that. I could see that. And I remember back in the day, there was some talk about them doing a Starfleet sitcom, and it never really went anywhere. So I don't, I don't know if it was just like pitched as something they were going to do, but it never, it never really went anywhere. So a don't near. Yeah. And finally, LT from NC says, this was one that I liked as long as I don't think about it. I laughed out loud a few times, but to use the same riff that Brian did on Q&A, I sent nitpicky LT to the kitchen to make coffee and popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> If you see if you look at it seriously and put a heavy cannon filter on it, there are issues. That said, if you just take it for what it is, it's funny. I agree, LT, and that's what I did. Yeah, I like and I, and I didn't talk about the fact that triples and I smacked don't him know. around. <laughs> <laughs> triples in the timeline, you know, we don't know that the fact they it would have been uh, introduced in this timeline, but but we also know. Normal me says, well, Tribbles were actually in Enterprise. Dr. Phlox had Tribble. So. Yeah. So the retconning started way back before this, in other words. Yeah. But I mean, Lorca had Tribble and that Tribble didn't reproduce. So we assume that this kind of explains that. Yeah, that's true. Or he found a way to sterilize it. Anyway, the retconning happened before this, in other words. And I smacked mm -hmm. uh, nitpicky Brian and sent him back to his corner. <laughs> so then LT, go, LT goes on. I like the captain and I felt for her character because anyone who has ever been a supervisor has that one person that reported to you that you just go <sighs> over. That was the sigh effect. Props to the writers and to Mr. Benjamin for making the most awkward Starfleet officer ever. One that makes our man Barkley look like a superhero. I have to agree with that completely. And yes, anyone who's ever had a, who's ever been a supervisor and has had to deal with this kind of person, you just, how, I don't understand how to, I can't even, <sighs> yeah, pretty much. I laughed a lot at several of the scenes, especially that we're done here bit. Mm -hmm. The reality of it is there were a lot of plot things where I just had to shake my head and roll with it. There's the, so how early were Tribbles noticed by Starfleet? Yeah. How did Kirk not know about them if, if they were researching on them earlier? Did Phlox and Edward have different standards for reproductive speed? Even if they were born pregnant, the earlier canon said they had to eat to reproduce. So what did they eat on the cabin? Why didn't they just EV suit up and open the hatches? That way you could have saved the ship. The final point was that lots of people have made hay over trying to transfer transfer Edward off the ship and bring up the similar thing with Picard and Barkley. I would always say the crew of the Enterprise D is much larger than the Cabot, so one problem officer there is a much bigger issue. Agreed. Yeah, and I don't get the whole Edward versus Barkley argument because, like I said earlier... Both of them were so socially awkward, okay? To me, that's where the similarity ends because Barkley did not have this kind of like- Stubborn rebelliousness? Yeah, and <laughs> disregarding orders complete, and- Yeah, complete uh, disregard for the chain of command and the yeah. order, of, <laughs> the rule of order, basically. Yeah, I mean, he vented by going onto the holodeck, but I don't think he did that. That's different. It, it definitely is different, you know. So, it's like me going and reading a book to escape or whatever when I'm pissed off at something or whatever. Yeah, it's and he completely not the same. He wasn't derelict in his orders when he when he did that either. Like it wasn't like a question of you know where's Barkley? Oh, he's on the holodeck. What's he doing there? You know, I I don't. I don't think that that was the case. I mean, we may have seen that a little bit in the nth degree, but he was actually doing his thing. But anyway, even if that was the case, 
what Barkley did does not compare to what Larkin did. Larkin disobeyed direct orders, kept working on- In an ethically questionable way. In an ethically, well, I wouldn't even say questionable way, in an ethically- Dubious? Dubious way. A lack of ethics were present. So it's not an apple and oranges thing. It's more like a, I think that Larkin was clearly- Well, it's like- Barkley didn't know how to relate to his senior officers, and the senior officer didn't know how to relate to him. And so, therefore, there was kind of a communication barrier more than anything else. And this is just completely different. I mean, you're right. They're not, it's not, they're not even in the same league. The only thing they have in common is the awkwardness. Right. And I would, I would hazard to say that Edward isn't really even awkward. He's just, prideful and stubborn and that makes for an awkward person but that's not the def that's not the hallmark of a socially awkward person right being prideful and stubborn a socially right. awkward person just doesn't know how to talk to people or how to relate to people or how to interact with people that's not what edward was edward was definitely prideful and definitely stubborn and to Edward, Edward was the most knowledgeable and expert on everything, or at least his one thing. Right. And no one could tell him differently about anything because he was Edward. So that's completely different. I don't even know why this is a thing. It's dumb. That should not be a thing. Mm-hmm. And I have to agree with what LT says. Having one problem person, well, I don't even know that Barkley is a problem. He's just kind of an awkward situation that LaForge has to deal with because he's on LaForge's crew. And so LaForge is trying to deal with it. And he's also helping, or um, Riker is helping LaForge, I think, because obviously Riker is in charge of personnel. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I just, he's not really a problem officer so much as he's just, I don't know how to relate to this person. So yeah, having Barkley on the Enterprise D, a much larger ship, is definitely... Completely different story than having this guy who thinks that he's right on the Cabot. If I had a person like that on the Cabot, I would definitely transfer him out. Mm -hmm. Barkley is so far below Picard's awareness. He might not even, he might only know about it in passing because a couple of his officers might have been talking about how to handle Barkley. (laughs) Not directly. Whereas Lucero had to deal with him directly. Picard is where Barkley would have been. Uh, had he not been stabbed in the heart, because of course, uh, tapestry, that's about where he is in, um, I think he was what, a science officer or something? We see him just for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I'm not sure. But I'm thinking more along the lines of uh, Edward is to Lucero, like say what LaForge would be to Picard. If if LaForge were like Edward, LaForge would have gotten transferred off. Mm, right. So it's not the same at all. Barkley is is an ensign, right? He's a, like, uh, no, he was a lieutenant. Well, okay, I, so he's one step over a, an ensign. Yeah, I don't remember if he was lieutenant, junior grade, or just a, a or a full lieutenant. I'd have to go back and look. But regardless, he is not in the same boat. Anyway, why don't we continue? Okay, just a little bit more. So carrying on. He says, in the end, it was funny and made me laugh. It also forced me not to think too much about the loopholes. I liked it, even if I have some issues and reservations as a whole. I'm betting there will be a lot of funny and lengthy comments from the listeners. Oh, and about the commercial. It was cute fan service for all of us who grew up with Saturday morning cartoons and serial commercials. Yeah. Again, I'm really trying not to trying to not think about it too much since the disclaimers made me laugh until I started thinking about them too much. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, though. It was so funny. Yeah. Oh, it was funny. You know, the problem is, if you think about comedy too much, a lot of times it falls apart. It's just, it's funny because it's funny. It's not necessarily logical. My take on it is that the commercial wasn't actually like a thing. It, it should not be considered canon. <laughs> <laughs> and if anyone is considering that canon, I have to wonder about them. The rest of the episode, I think it 
does fit into canon, but not the commercial. But the commercial was hysterical. Oh, I mean, funny. that was definitely, to me, the funniest part of it. And I remember just going into her own thoughts about the episode that don't fit into the other things we've said. I remember when I first watched it, I was looking at the time left. And I'm like, gee, this is a lot of time left on the episode, even though we're already in the, the credits. credits. Yeah. That's a lot of end credit time. And I was curious what was going to happen. And unfortunately, though, that played as a negative uh, for the next short track. But I'll get into that when we cover that episode. It was like, what's going on? So I, I, I and I always w- go to the end anyway, but I was especially like curious. And then all of a sudden this commercial popped up and man, that was funny. That's definitely funny. Do you have any other notes for this episode? Um, no, I don't think so. The one thing that I noticed was a surprise that it's pre 63. That means that there's 63 plus planets in the pre system. Holy crap. That's a lot of planets. Does it specifically mean planet or could it be like celestial bodies, like moons? I mean, it, it could be a moon. I don't know. But I think normally they they name planets only, but I don't mm. know. It's But yeah, that's a lot. It could be something else. We don't know. But And I doubt that the planet was called Prejeane 63 without there being 62 things in front of it. <laughs> but I don't know. It's not explained, and I don't think that it's uh, really that much. Although I will say that, you know, if you add one to the uh, six and you add one to the three and you flip them around, you get a 47. (laughs) Okay, that's stretching a bit. (laughs) Yeah, I know. (laughs) And then you minus three and divide by four. (laughs) <laughs> anyway okay yeah good times <laughs> that's it for this episode and we do have some twitter responses so we'll cover that on our next episode in terms of shipwide announcements <whistles> we're just going to keep this light because uh we are going to record a second episode after this one but the blu-ray of Season two of Discovery is out for those of you that may have been waiting for it. I don't know. I do not have that. I, and I assume, Ruthie, you don't either. No. So I know that one thing that the Blu-ray has that the previous one didn't have is it does have some uh, commentary episodes. So I think that would be cool to listen to, but I haven't purchased it. So. I haven't really heard anybody specifically comment too much about it, but I do know that the one thing it has over the season one Blu-ray is it does have some commentary. So that's pretty cool. All right. All right. So with that, I think that we are done. So Ruthie, why don't you tell people how to contact us? All righty. If you would like to submit your feedback or theories, etc. cetera, or connect with us in general, you can do that by going to talkthroughmedia.com slash feedback, uh, where you can submit text or audio. You can also call 216-232-6146. You can send us an email, and that is Star Trek Discovery at talkthroughmedia.com. Or you can post in our designated episode thread in our Facebook group which is facebook.com slash groups slash Star Trek TTM podcasts. You can also tweet us at Star Trek TTM. And we have a new Amazon affiliate link. You can go to talkthroughmedia.com slash Amazon, or you can use our affiliate link. I don't know if you would call it a, an ID, our affiliate link ID, which is talkthroughme dash 20. So when you're doing your Christmas shopping this year and you're going to use your Amazon anyway, please consider using our affiliate, our Amazon affiliate, so that we can get a little bit of help running this show. Great way to support us is to share our posts on Twitter and Facebook. And one of the ways to 
to do that is to share the things that we post on the Talk Through Media Facebook page, and that is at facebook.com forward slash talk through media. What we're doing, you know, going forward is we'll, we will post the episode posts on talk through media, and then we will share them to the uh, Facebook group. So uh, that way you can share the posts on the talk through media, but because the Facebook group is a closed group, you can't share those. So this gives us a chance to share it out. So, uh, yeah, do that. Uh, subscribe to us in Apple Podcasts or the podcast clients of your choice. And while you're there, give us a rating review. And we've gotten a couple of reviews since the last time we recorded. We got a five star from Mitchell App from the UK. And he says, a fair, enthusiastic discussion of disco. And thank you very much. And unfortunately, we got a one star. So, I don't really want to highlight that. Hopefully, if you give us a review, if you like us, it will help other people if you give us a five star. We just appreciate if you give us a an honest review, but you know, try to be fair. And you don't need to be a jerk. <laughs> So, and for more on that, you can find it on our Facebook group. Yeah, there was a big, lively discussion about it. Yes, <laughs> and I personally don't feel like there's anything wrong with asking for what we want, which is five star reviews if you feel like that's what we deserve. Right. Another way you can help support us is through Patreon, and that URL is patreon.com. That's p a t r e o n dot com forward slash Brian and Ruthie. And we are going to do some Patreon content. I know we've been promising that. And LT has given us some, at his rate of contribution, he his level. could give us some content suggestions. So uh, we may do some of those as Patreon shows. We may do some as regular shows, but we are going to do some Patreon stuff and I'm actually going to send out a message about Patreon to the, the members of Patreon after we record today. So, because we have a question mm. <laughs> to you. And I want to thank a couple of people that we don't have any new Patreon supporters since our last recording, but we do have a couple of people that have increased their contribution. James, the augmented sailor. Thank you so much for upgrading your contribution to us every month. We appreciate that. And uh, you've been a loyal uh, listener from, I think, just about the beginning. So thank you so much. And Clint, you also upgraded your support. So thank you so much. So, And, of course, we want to also thank LT, Fred from the Netherlands, and Kyle McAdams, who is, of course, uh, my co-host on uh, Fear the Walking Dead talk through and a childhood friend of Ruthie. Yes. So thank you. And part of this network, of course. Yes. So just to wrap it up, want to remind you guys to, that we have the Star Trek Picard cast as a separate podcast on the talk through media network. We released the first episode as part of the Star Trek discovery podcast feed, but uh, future episodes and we're going to record some more episodes soon. I'm done now for quite a while, maybe forever on The Walking Dead. So, Ruthie, you and I, we're going to ramp stuff up on, on the Star Trek. And if you're uh, willing. So, yeah. So, we're, you'll be getting a lot more content from us going forward. So, expect some more episodes in the feed both on the Star Trek Discovery podcast and the Star Trek Picard cast. So we'll we'll be doing episode two very shortly. So look out for that. You can also, of course, hear me on The Walking Dead Talk Through. We released our last episode for the half season earlier this week. That show is on hiatus until February 23rd. And I'm going to pull back my coverage of that show 
and hand over things to uh, Mark and probably Kyle or we'll get some guest hosts because I, I already know that I'm not going to be able to handle it with uh, Star Trek going on because I expect us to get 28 pages of feedback each episode of Picard <laughs> 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 or pretty close. Don't let um, us down. Yeah. And the only way you're going to get your Brian fix is going to be right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At, at least like, I, I'm not saying I'm done with the show, but I'm, I'm certainly going to pull back a lot from that show. So, because I see going forward, there's going to be a lot more Star Trek content. And this is where my heart is at this point. So anyway, that's the case. But definitely stay tuned to this podcast and the Star Trek Picard cast for the foreseeable future. Because we're going to have tons of stuff going forward. Uh, we will be covering in the next episode, the next short trek, which we'll be recording right after this, titled Ask Not. And... That's a Pike episode, so we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. But until next time, I'm Brian. And I'm Ruthie. Peace and long life. Live long and prosper. Bye.